So I'd love to start, um, Gloria, time-wise, I love where it's set, that, that whole look of it. Yeah. Can you talk to me about creating that whole element of the timing of it. It's, it's, I don't know, the look of it looks so special. I love the way it looked, the movie. Sure, yeah. So we wanted to bring in uh, the 1966 is when it, it takes place, and it's when women are starting to wear pants, and there's just a lot of color, and the color was a huge, huge thing with, with, with the lighting. I remember my gaffer thinking, he asked me how I want it lit, and he, he was like, well, it's a speakeasy. Shouldn't it be dark or something? I was like, no, think of it like an eight-year-old's birthday party and so he's like got it <laughs> and so we that that was the vibe we wanted this like vibrant and just because there's drag and just everybody getting into different costumes and and Camille uh sh- her background my co- uh, co-director Camille Schmoltz she's the one who actually wrote it um she is from the theater background and so oh, okay. she had a lot of time to gather that the uh, costumes and designing she herself is a makeup artist and the hair Um, designing of every little bit of detail for that so it was a perfect storm because I must admit my forte is more with camera work with performance and uh, just maybe lighting and stuff but hers was art and she really really nailed that in terms of the wardrobe in terms of creating the looks and then combine that with my production designer who's the production designer for both films Kelly Penna it just came to play so I'd love to know how that dynamic works like on set with co-directors, I mean, there's you hear about brothers doing it, but like from y'all's different perspectives, how did it work? Sure. So for us, I think because it was her first time directing, um, she really let she gave me the freedom to at least deal with the performance and with the technicalities of the the camera movement. So I worked really closely with the DP, who's a good friend of mine, or Orlando Briones and kind of mapped out a lot of the, the ways I wanted the movement to work. She had a good storyboard that she came in, and so prior to that, we were able to, from that storyboard, I knew kind of what she wanted in her head, and so I just kept adding to it. So um, when it came to the art aspect, I really just let her run with that. Uh, I've never had the uh, opportunity to do a period piece because, of course, budget is always the constraint. And so I just had her create the world, and uh, I just play with cameras and performance. So it just—it was just a perfect storm. Um, if if it was. I've co-directed before and it was not like that, um, not such a positive experience, and this, our skills really complemented each other, so. Talk about locations, but also timing over, over, over all the shoot, because you have the house they're in, the speakeasy, but like, I love the, the number of locations you guys have. There's some vibrant, different looks to the film. Sure, yeah, so most of it, I would say two, it was some overnight shoots. Um, all the, the, uh, stuff you see in the speakeasy that's in one giant warehouse um this warehouse i guess they use for events and stuff so we kind of had a free reign of it which was great um we had to start shooting starting from 3 p.m and later because we had a lot of high school levels uh actors and they don't, didn't get out of school to around then and so we couldn't start to, till then and it, w- it would it would go all the way till 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and then, um, yeah, I watched the sunrise with my crew multiple times. That's when you get really close to them. (laughs) Yes, and so, uh, but that that was, uh, the main was that, and then we had the diner, and luckily they were all within close proximity. So that's why I love shooting in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, They have amazing architecture that's, you know, backstated, and uh, they're all really close to each other, so, yeah. Kind of flipping script, I, I, I we'll jump to six words. Sure. Um, whose house is that, and where was that location set? Yes, yeah, so that was a house that was within Camille's family, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was passed down, and it was in its original state. Uh, you go in, and it looks like a museum. So uh-huh. um, there, her grandparents, I believe, just kind of kept it as is, and then she kind of inherited it. So um, I think our, if anything, it was really well maintained. It was just hiding some of the maybe the wear and tear that you wouldn't see in like a brand new house. But like, it was awesome that house. So I think one of my loudest of all the films I've seen where crack up is when they open the door and there's a police officer, and then there's the parents and yeah. six words. And I was like. Holy crap. Um, where did this idea come from? Is this a story that 
you know, where did this come from? It was fascinating. Sure. So six words. Uh, I always tell my friends if they want to see what my life is with my parents, that six <laughs> words is a great look at that. And, you know, I'm not LGBTQ, but I the, the, th- the thought came with, you know, I, I when I was dating and stuff, there was a point where my parents hated my choice of a boyfriend and I had to hide it from them and they found out and it was a terrible terrible experience and so I kind of took that and thought of what would be something that I would hide from my parents and be revealed in a really funny way and so uh, that could take place in one house and so that's kind of what we came up with was was a reveal of her sexuality so um the bachelorette party was super fun to do my my production designer sent me a picture of all these cartoon dicks she had (laughs) she had to draw hand drawn and cut out she's like i hate you so much right now she had like 50 different cartoon dicks like on her strewn all over her table but um yeah i just it was uh we shot that was the first time i shot with an aria alexa Oh, nice. Which is beautiful. Uh, Aria Alexa Mini. And um, yeah, it just, it took, it was only a two day shoot. So it was fast. Yeah. I'll ask you a technical question. With that being such a tight, fun camera to use compared to the bulky ones, how much more freedom did you have shooting with that camera in particular? Sure. So for the Alexa, um, I had won this little. Uh, I don't want to say grant, but a gift card to Awesome Movie Gear, which does local rentals. And so I was able to use actually a legit dolly that had the, um, where you could dolly up and pan up as well. So um. I, I had a lot of room to play with movement. Hence, there was so many like these wonders where it was like push in and then you'll, you'll lift up and everything. Um, it was great because of the lack of bulk. You could, you could do that. Um, cheaply because it was not a not like a Chapman or something really expensive in terms of a dolly it was like an okay one but it because the weight of the Alexa wasn't that bad it was able to handle it so um, but that was, that was is fun. there then a shot that you love in it that you're like ah I'm so grateful we got to do that in shoot s- in so in Gloria there is one shot that I refused to cut no matter what um, and it was uh, there was a it was where they're zooming in and out and they're dancing for the first time and it's ah. one giant long take and um that is by far my favorite shot from a lot of the movies i've made i, I just love that film in in that particular shot because i'm an editor and you know you're always trying to cut dead space and stuff but that one like i forgot to call cut because i was just so lost in in, in that in that story um, in six words I would say one of my favorite is that one's hard um, I would say this big pull out from the parents sitting on the couch and then it reveals the rest of the party and everybody being really depressed and because the parents have ruined their bachelor party that was a pretty pretty great moment so I think you end that with her drinking the wine yes, with the big, yeah. with the big awesome beat. shot yeah yeah um, I'd love to know as far as is there any life for these films in a feature realm or script wise are you working on a feature to, to piggyback off of this or do you like this short world um, so these two particular were probably contained Gloria I think I could see going on actually you know six words I saw could go episodic mm. it's actually pretty when I went to edit I was like man this feels really TV isk um, so I feel like that could go on to be like a fresh off the boat or yeah. something um, on that on that line uh, Gloria definitely probably could develop into features and that is kind of something that I do is I now the shorts that I make I am very conscious of it being a proof of concept for something bigger um, I currently am trying to raise funding for my second feature and I did a proof of concept short and hoping that it'll catch on and you know fund the feature we'll see so uh what's it like knowing that you're at a festival that showcases uh women filmmakers but i mean hopefully in the future we don't have to have festivals like this but right now in this time frame i think what justine is trying to do is something radical as she puts it in there and something very important what does it mean to be one of these filmmakers here now 
I love that there are festivals like these that support women filmmakers. Oftentimes it's just us needing a chance, you know. Um, there's so many festivals out there that we, we can't even make the quota of, you know, films being, being shown. And the thing with stuff like this is that it gives us a platform and hopefully people that are, are able to s support and watch our films and realize that we do great work are able to fund those films and so um, there's plenty of female filmmakers the problem is there's not a lot of people supporting giving them the resources to continue to do their their craft and these things especially for the community to be a part of makes people realize oh women can be funny and women can do f horror and all these genres that maybe otherwise you wouldn't people don't think about that women can do. So I think it's fantastic. And all the female filmmakers I've made, uh, met have been incredible, extremely, very supportive. And we're all like networking and, hey, can I help you do this? And um, I don't know, it's a, it's a great environment. And I just hope that, yes, hope one day we won't need it because there will be enough um, people wanting to include female filmmakers, but it's definitely a step in the right direction.